this is Winning the Hearts and Minds, Element 1, about the media and how it can be used to influence you. Now, before we go any farther in this uh, study, Winning the Hearts and Minds is about the idea that politicians want to get the public on their side. And a lot of times, it's through manipulative means. The biggest thing is that you don't want to be a pawn in somebody's game. Now, Machiavellian politics often involves doing whatever is necessary, the ends justifying the means, as long as you end up with something good. But that also often involves patronage. That involves the uh, trading of favors in order to get your agendas. In that regard, uh, politics can get very, very manipulative in a lot of different areas. And so there's really only two things you can do against a government that has all the power and advantages and everything else. Your only two primary advantages in the great American political game are the name of this unit, your voice and your choice. Uh, speak out when you see manipulation happening and use your voting power to choose new leaders when it comes to that point. But this element that we're taking a look at is about the media, so let's get back to that. Uh, the mass media, simply defined, is media designed to get to a mass audience. Now, traditionally, that's been uh, newspapers, magazines, radio, and of course, television. But now mass media these days has gotten a, a lot more technological uh, with YouTube, Flickr, Pinterest, Facebook, all Twitter, all of these different things you can use to, to get your news or just to get general information. Uh, it's made it uh, a whole different definition of what mass media was. But of course, one of the things you have to be very concerned about is the use of propaganda. Uh, and if you don't know what propaganda is, it's something that is designed to sway your opinion without you realizing that it's even happening. It's been a common tool of dictators in history. Benito Mussolini used to uh, drive the same army trucks around a building and only film that corner while he played patriotic music in the background. Um, you know, add any music or any image on a poster... Uh, to just about any type of hysteria, and you can get a mass audience to do what they want you to do, or what you want them to do. So in that regard, I would caution you on this. I would not personally trust 100% any form of mass media. Uh, if you do, you are subjecting yourself to potential bias and slant, and little things can turn into big things pretty quickly. If you're misled even a little bit, it could lead you into major decisions that could be detrimental to everybody involved. So ultimately, when it's all said and done, uh, be very careful of two things. Uh, mass media and how information is presented to you, sometimes out of context, sometimes involving uh, a specific agenda that a, a media outlet wants to give you, and the public opinion that you and many other people could create for a politician as a result. Because whether you realize it or not, politicians rely on public opinion polls to see what you guys all think, myself included, and therefore make major decisions based on that information. If you're misinformed by the media, you will in turn misinform the government leaders that we have. But it's not like government leaders don't know how to use the media to their advantage as well. Uh, media events, also known as a classic photo op, uh, take place all the time. Generally, when you're setting up for a media event, you're trying to portray yourself in a certain image to the public uh, without really putting that much effort into it. You might be getting a photograph of you breaking ground at the new community center with your golden shovels, or... Frankly, you may not even be digging into the ground at all, just might be posing with those shovels. If you are, you are presenting an image that uh, you are there to help out, uh, you've been behind this process the whole way, but this is your classic photo op or photo opportunity. I mean, you're not going to be there any, for any more than 10 minutes. As soon as the cameras are gone, you're gone too, but you've portrayed the image that you want to portray. You might be a politician who's never been on a construction site in his life, but if the cameras are going there and you're going to talk to unions and they could help get you elected, 
then you put on a hard hat and you walk in there and tell them about your policies and try to convince them that you're just like them. Or you could be trying to gain voters by presenting more of a common man image, uh, just sitting around having a beer with some friends because I'm just like you. But if you're a politician, probably one of the best ways to use the media to your advantage is through the use of the press conference. Now, politicians have not always made good use of press conferences. Uh, Herbert Hoover once said, The President of the United States will not stand and be questioned like a chicken thief by men whose names he does not even know. And he made the press submit their questions to him in writing. But the guy who was a real genius at it and kind of set the standard for how politicians use press conferences now is the guy who followed Hoover, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Now, to Roosevelt, uh, the media were a potential ally. Roosevelt would uh, promise reporters two presidential press conferences a week, uh, which meant over the course of his presidency, there were about a thousand press conferences in the White House. Now, Roosevelt made it very clear that if he was going to give you that, you were going to take care of him as well. So when reporters started asking questions that he didn't want covered, uh, material that he did not want addressed, uh, they backed off because he was giving them the opportunity to come in and ask him questions. Uh, if he wanted something to be covered, he would tell them he wanted it to be covered. Some politicians have just simply said to reporters, just don't bother paying attention, and when I get to something really important, I'll just tap on the side of a podium, and you write about that. If you have control of the press conference, you have control of the media, and now the message you want to get out is the only one being presented to the American public. But you don't just have to be wary of politicians using the media, you also have to be concerned about the media themselves being manipulative on their own. Now, that being said, you have to understand what they're trying to do and what's all involved with mass media and national news broadcasts. So let's get into this concept first. It's called broadcasting, and what broadcasting is, uh, is having limited resources broadcasting or getting their message out to a mass audience. When I was a kid, this is basically how it was. You had ABC, you had NBC, and you had CBS, and they were really the only TV news stations broadcasting to the entire country. Narrowcasting, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. Narrowcasting is when you have literally hundreds of potential news sources, and therefore they don't broadcast to a mass audience anymore because not everyone is going to watch every single news source that's out there. They're going to pick and choose what they want to take a look at. So narrowcasting involves the idea of too many news sources now really getting specific messages out to a limited group of people. Uh, some people will take a look at CNN, some people will take a look at Fox News, some people will take a look at MSNBC or an, an internet site to get their news, or The Daily Show or The Colbert Report. Uh, the bottom line here is that nobody really is uh, in a broadcast state anymore where it's just three sources broadcasting to the country. Now we're in an age of narrow casting. So when you look at some of the major media outlets that are out there right now, what are you essentially looking at? Well, the first one, CNN, um, is probably about as balanced as you're going to find. What CNN typically does is bring an equal number of conservatives and an equal number of liberals onto their stage and let them debate against each other. So it's not really a heavy right-leaning or a heavy left-leaning station. Now, don't get me wrong, even though you're allowing for some fairness and balance in the background here with a Republican table and a Democratic table, you are still going to find some slightly left leanings with uh, CNN, so uh, it's not completely and totally fair and balanced, but they do a pretty good job doing the best they can with it. And as a result, you get a fairly moderate station that seems to always present uh, liberals and conservatives, and independents for that matter, debating ideas with each other in about as balanced a way as you're going to see a major news media outlet do it. Not perfect by any means, and I certainly wouldn't suggest trusting anything that anybody says in the media as gospel, but 
this isn't too bad. Now, Fox News, of course, if you take a look at it, is a fairly right-leaning station. It's uh, a pretty heavily conservative station. Uh, whenever they do public opinion polls uh, about who just won a presidential debate, inevitably it's the Republican that wins, and I mean this sincerely if you take a look, like 90% to 10% because of who the audience is. The audience is mostly right-wing conservatives, and Fox News Channel is mostly a right-wing conservative channel. On the opposite end of the political spectrum is MSNBC. If you took a look at a public opinion poll after a uh, presidential debate um, uh, on MSNBC, uh, I've seen it go 89% to 11% for the Democrat. And again, it's because who is watching MSNBC? Democrats, more, liberal think, more liberally, liberally thinking people, are watching MSNBC, and those are the results that you're going to get. So... Um, you know, Fox News is pretty heavy conservative, and MSNBC is kind of its polar opposite on the left wing, very heavily liberal. But also what you want to be careful of is not being swept in by entertainment and automatically considering that to be news. Uh, the Daily Show was a show that I loved to watch when it was on the air, but be aware that The Daily Show... Uh, is meant for entertainment purposes only. You can't really adopt it as a credible news source because it's going to have a distinct slant. It's going to be meant for uh, satire, it's going to be meant for parody uh, of uh, politicians, and it's going to be pretty left-leaning. As is the Colbert Report. Uh, part of the uh, uh, fun in the Colbert Report was that uh, uh, Stephen Colbert was... Uh, a fairly liberal personality in the show was fairly liberal, but he presented himself dressed as a, uh, uh, a conservative thinker. Uh, that was part of the shtick of the whole show. So it's tough to use The Daily Show and The Colbert Report as credible news sources, but you also have to be a little bit careful of Internet news as well. Now, there are some advantages to Internet news. First of all, it's uh, readily accessible, and it's completely easy to get. But there are some disadvantages of using Internet news as well. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this program has become more prominent, and they apparently now have an HD TV in the background as well. But a lot of times on Internet broadcasts, you, you'll get somebody with no journalistic credentials whatsoever broadcasting something out of their garage and just spouting off their opinions. And if they're relatively entertaining then all of a sudden you start listening to them and thinking that they are a credible news source when they very well could just be making things up. Uh, there's a lot of the internet broadcasts that are out there right now, and the advantages of the internet, the ease of use and how much you can find, is also, in some cases, a disadvantage as well. And finally, when you're taking a look at media broadcasts, be very careful of what is called soundbite journalism. Now, soundbite journalism is when you see uh, someone being interviewed on television or someone being quoted in the paper. They might give them 20 minutes of material to work on. But the problem is they're trying to squeeze various news stories into a half an hour TV show. So even though you might have had a 20 minute conversation with a reporter, he might take about a 30 second snippet of that and put that on the air. Now, a lot of times, if you don't know what the conversation was around the quotes that you see on the air, the situation could be totally taken out of context, and the media can present the story in a way that they would like the story to be heard, not necessarily the whole story. A half-truth instead of the whole truth. So between all the different things that could be involved, you have to be very wary of the media, and be very wary of any manipulations that may be attempted on you. Okay, that's it. Thanks for listening.